Yeah, snake. That's right. A little, little cold in the 60s, but he's not particularly active. His nose is a little dirty. Yeah, he's got eye fungus. Nice. Picture? Yeah, pictures. We're coming up in late fall, so we decided to take another adventure. Uh, Michael actually decided to join us on this one. We're out in Virginia, checking out some of the swamps, as you can see behind us. We were just walking the swamp edge, a lot of frogs, um, a couple turtles and stuff like that. But we came across this plain-bellied water snake. To me, they're the red-bellied water snake. Science decided differently. Um, but what's really cool about this guy, well, it's not necessarily cool, but he's got a lot of scars on him. Looks like from turtles, raptors, uh, predatory birds. Um, but one thing that's also kind of sad about him is he's got a nice fungus disease going on in his face. His eyes all look, you know, infected. His face is you know, got fungus growing all over it. It's really sad to see that in the wild. I mean, it is a, you know, a red bellied water snake. We don't see them too often. Uh, excuse me, plain bellied water snake. Um, I mean, it's still really cool to see them, but it's just kind of sad to see that. Um, actually, when we found this guy, Michael, he, uh, he found a box turtle while he was walking over here. Um, so you want to go check that out? Yeah, we can go check out that box turtle. So now that it's late fall, it is getting a little bit colder at night. One of the things you really got to look out for is cover. A lot of reptiles and amphibians will seek cover when it gets colder at night so they can thermoregulate. Now, sometimes when you're in a situation where there's not a lot of cover out here in this swamp, there isn't much other than the forest floor itself and maybe a couple fallen logs. So I got really lucky and I spotted this box turtle down here. Now this turtle is tucked in. He's definitely in there trying to just keep warm and hang out, probably spent the night here. And we got rain coming in, so he'll probably spend the rest of the day here and probably come out when the conditions get a little bit more favorable. Here's what Matt looks like when he fails to herp. He was a big one, too. Flip the log that's behind Terrible. you. Do a better job next time. Shut up. Now flip that log over there. The penis the log hole fell apart. That his hands are a little slippery. Probably. Could and be. Find anything? No, the log over there. That one. Uh, salamander. Oh, cool. Yeah. If we're looking for termites, I got the termite market cornered. More termites. Oh, I got one. I got a land close to slimy. I did. Oh, I see it. Get it. Don't let go in this hole. I know this may look like a normal salamander that we get back home in Maryland, but this is actually something that we we're really hoping to find while we're on this trip. This is actually the Atlantic Coastal Slimy Salamander. Um, they're very similar to the ones we get at home, except instead of the mountainous kind of rocky um, habitat that they like back in Maryland, um, these guys actually prefer soft sandy soil, which is pretty much how they get their name, the, the coastal salamander. Um, that's actually a really interesting fact because um, not a lot of salamanders prefer that type of habitat. Beautiful. First cotton of the trip. Very nice. That's a big cotton too. So after a several hour drive from our home in Maryland, we found ourselves down here in southeastern Virginia. I've seen these before. This is the eastern cottonmouth. They're down here in these swamps. Um, absolutely beautiful animal, but very venomous. So I don't want to get too close and risk getting bitten by this animal. Um, I, you know, if you ever see them, just give them their space, respect them, observe them from afar. Just absolutely fascinating animals. They spend all their time out here in these swamps. They will actually prey, unlike other snakes, they'll prey on cold stuff. They eat fish, they eat frogs. They've even been observed eating a roadkill. But out here in the swamp, not too many roads to worry about, thankfully, so that way this snake should be relatively safe from automobiles. Got a big spider here, being a good mom. I'm gonna look back here, that is a little ball of spiderlings. Look at them moving around, they're freaking out. That's pretty wild. I'm fairly certain this is a species of wolf spider. It could be wrong. It could be a type of fishing spider. I'm trying to get a good look at the eye arrangement. But I am no expert in these particular species, but still think it's really cool when you get to see one like this. Just being so protective of its young. So cool. Ah. Sorry, I scared. 
you can see this tiny little snake right here. We almost actually just walked right over it. Um, if you can check out the belly pattern on this, this is actually a juvenile of the red belly, or actually, I'm so sorry, the plain bellied water snake um, that you saw a little bit earlier on this video. It's just a really adorable little snake. All right, so it's getting later in the afternoon. We're heading to a second spot for the day, and on our way, we came across a lovely little ribbon snake who has, he was just sitting in the road. Got out and grabbed him, and he's not really doing it now, but he was a ferocious little guy. He wouldn't stop trying to bite me. I don't really have a ribbon snake usually act that way, so that's kind of funny to see. But uh, it's kind of a cool little, cool little snake. Not a surprise we found him here in the swamp. So while out here hiking this afternoon, uh, I happened to just spot this rat snake sitting on the ground. The first thing I saw was just the tail. Upon closer inspection, it's very faint, but you can actually see stripes running the length of this snake. Uh, up north, it's not so common. Down here in southeast Virginia, I think maybe there's a little bit of mixing. We're starting to approach like the, the yellow color phase where you get uh, these kind of like yellowish olive stripes and you get dark stripes. When you get really far south, that striping is really, really predominant in these animals. Um, where we are, I can kind of see it. It's pretty cool. Um, not something I expected to see. Um, really jet black belly too. I almost thought, uh, I, I saw the back half, I thought it was a racer. But uh, up north, sometimes you'll see some of the juvenile pattern also retained in these as they age. But really, really fascinating. I, I absolutely love these guys. I mean, he he's pretty calm now. He, he got me a little bit when I first picked him up. Uh, I deserved it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just really cool to see. You know, maybe maybe there's some mixing of the gene pool. Maybe it's a I can't really say it's an integrate because they've all been classified as the same species now. There's no no longer a yellow rat snake. But. Uh, yeah, just super fascinating. Anybody there? What'd you, what do you got? Oh, oh yeah? I want to check them out. Did you get him? I think so. Let's check them out. Matt got a lizard. So there's a number of salamander species down here that occur in uh, southeastern coastal Virginia, and this is one of them here. This is a marble salamander. This is a male, uh, very bright silver, just absolutely beautiful salamander. I, I love finding these guys. Um, right now, this swampy area is damp. It's not full of water yet. They normally come to these areas before they fill up to lay their eggs, uh, so they get a head start. They lay their eggs in the fall ahead of all the other uh, mole salamanders that normally lay their eggs in the spring. I love coming out here. I love getting to see these guys. I'm gonna have to pick this one up and reset this log. Uh, just so I don't smush him. Let me go ahead and reset this here. All right, cool. So, while well, you okay. were looking for that, oh uh, hey, <laughs> well, you were cool. looking for salamanders. I found a red belly snake. And these guys, like Michael said, we were out here flipping for salamanders because it's about that time of year. But you never know what you're gonna find. This little red belly snake here. He was under a log. Um, There's hand. Yeah, he's. Got to tan his belly, as you can see, that's why they get their name, Red Belly. Um, his belly's actually a little more orangish, if you can see that. But these guys are cool. It's just really cool. You never know what you're going to find yeah, awesome. any time of the year. Here's another species that's similar to the ones we get at home, which is the northern ringneck snake. However, this here is a southern ringneck snake. Um, often they will integrate up home or in, in the areas between northern and southern. However, one distinctive factor to tell that you have a true southern um, ringneck is this broken ring here right around his neck. Um, the pattern on its belly is also another distinctive factor. However, the integrates will get this. Also, as um, further south you get, their tail right here will actually be a lot more red. And it's actually a defense me mechanism that they use. Um, they have this red on the tail and they'll actually curl their tail. I wish this guy would do it, but he's not gonna do it for us. Um, but they'll curl their tail to sort of get the predator to go towards their tail and save their head from being eaten. Um, they're a neat little snake. Um, the southern ones I think are a little bit cooler than the northern ones. Uh, the northern ones don't have quite as much color and um, fancy stuff they do with their tails, but they're still a neat little snake. Walk into the forest and spotted this black rat snake. We're gonna leave this one alone. Not just because it's thermoregulating, basking, it's all kinked up, but because it has decided to pause next to this. A yellow jacket hive. So we are gonna just move along. Done. Done.
Bye. We're walking this trail and we actually learned on this trail, I've never heard them called this before. Um, I guess locally they're called the Congo Copperhead, which I thought was kind of funny. But um, we got a real pretty cottonmouth right up here. If you want to come up closer and just check him out, he's just out here basking in the sun. You got camera rolling? Yes, sir. I come equipped with my baby, my baby hook. Yeah. Well, what are you going to use your baby hook for? I, got, I just rolled this log and I did not expect the copperhead, but now I got to move him. It's a really pretty one. He's not happy because I just uncovered his house. Let's see if we can get him out from under there. He's small. These little, these little snake hooks, they kind of come in handy. Not the, not the best tool. He's got a nice pink belly. Well, we're only down here for the weekend, but we're uh, two of three venomous snakes native to the area now. This is a copperhead. I just rolled it under a log. I wanted to just pull it out and get a close look at it. Very, very beautiful individual. The copperhead was recently reclassified. Uh, these individuals here used to be known as the southern copperhead but they are now all just classified in the same as the northern. Kind of similar to how they reclassified the rattlesnakes a number of years ago. I thought uh, actually the northern copperhead and the southern are now just the eastern, the eastern. copperhead I think that, actually. I think that's right, yeah. This one's really cool if you could see the belly. He's got really thick, dark, bands on his belly which we don't see that at home too often his belly's a little pink it's really cool yeah. he's got some of the spots yeah the southerns aren't supposed to have those yeah he's got some spots that's like 50 otters playing at once <laughs> probably <laughs> alright oh. I just shouted Crotalus and I know what that means. We're in a park where there's a number of people around. We try and keep some of our finds on the DL because not everyone appreciates the Crotalus like we do. So let's go see what they have over here. Where there's two, there's more. Don't watch yeah. it. Oh yeah, that one's on the crawl. This is the timber rattlesnake. Um, down here, they're locally known as the cane break. Um, one of the reasons that they used to be classified as a cane break is they have this very descriptive orange pattern that runs along their back. But over the over the time, you know, um, years, they just they got classified back with the regular timber rattlesnakes. This one here is actually displaying the orange pattern. Now these guys, they're real young. They'll change color as they get older. Um, these ones are probably born probably within the month. So this is actually really exciting to see this. Uh, there's another one the over there one. actually, so there's a few of them around here So I got to be careful where we walk watch your step. So this tree I would I would bet money This is this is the winter. So we got this animal. We got mom mom right over here. here beautiful animal Absolutely stunning Look at the orange like the yellowish kind of color on the it? cheek and what she's doing is she's making herself look bigger because she's starting to feel threatened by our presence so um i mean with her just giving birth i think i think i heard michael say he just found the sixth baby um which are actually called neonates in their young form um but we don't want to bug her too much because she's starting to feel a little little defensive she hasn't rattled yet which is which is good so we're probably going to give her her space and let her hang out and her winter home, which she's getting ready to hunker down in with her babies. And here, there's a baby going right into her tree. Oh, it's rattling. I bet you like the baby. Yeah. yeah. Can hear it. It was going yeah. right into that tree. That one's going home. Yep. Careful, you're close to it. No, I can see. Absolutely awesome find. We were clued in to this, actually just hiking along the trail. It seems like some of the the newborn rattlesnakes had found their way out towards the path stepped path on and walking. There's That's a little how. Bit... What? I almost stepped on one. That's how okay. I found it. <laughs> yeah, Siobhan Shab almost stepped on one of these little rattlesnakes out here walking along the path. And it kind of clued us in. Maybe we should look around a little bit more. I spotted 
I started looking around at the trees. We're not real familiar with finding rattlesnakes in this type of habitat. I spotted this big tree, bunch of open cavities in the bottom, walked over here, found two more babies right on the back side of this tree. This absolutely beautiful rattlesnake. Just what a great way to end my trip here. Matt and Siobhan are staying for a little bit longer. I gotta go home today, but absolutely amazing. I, I just can't believe it. We've actually been seeing a lot of uh, or plain bellied water snakes on this trip, which is kind of uncommon for us since up in Maryland we see a lot of northern water snakes. Something that we haven't really seen too much of are the northern water snakes. Now this here, what I have is actually a juvenile northern water snake. Um, the first one we've seen in the trip, only one we've seen in the trip, probably the only one we're going to see. Um, but you can definitely tell it's a northern water snake because you can tell, let me show you its belly, is I, you probably saw the juvenile uh, plain belly a little bit earlier on the tape, but I don't know if you remember that that belly was very vivid, it was red, and there was a pattern. This is white, and it's um, it's got this little stripe pattern on here, and that's definitely one way you can tell them apart. So we have a really amazing find here. This is a juvenile eastern king snake. Now, unfortunately, my brother had to cut his trip a little short, so he's not gonna get to see this in person. So, sorry for that, Michael, because I know how much you love king snakes. But um, this guy here, he's actually in shed. And usually when a snake goes into shed, that usually means they're getting ready to get bigger. So basically, they will peel an entire layer of skin as they grow bigger. It's an amazing things that snakes do. Um, but when a snake goes into shed, their eyes, they'll get really cloudy. It's very hard for them to see. Um, they'll get really dull in color. Um, their belly scales, they'll get really like, they'll get like a bluish tint almost. You, you can notice this on black snakes especially. Um, the belly scales, they'll get real glossy in color. But I'm not really, honestly, I'm not really surprised we found him out here walking some of these canals in the, in the swamp because some of their favorite food is actually water snakes. So it's very common to find king snakes near lakes, streams, rivers, um, obviously swamps. Now, one thing that's really cool about these guys is they'll eat venomous snakes, which in the area, cottonmouths and copperheads, they use the same habitat. So if a king snake comes across one of them and he thinks it's, you know, I can take that down, that's small enough for me to eat, the, you know, he'll go after them and they'll, you know, if they bite that king snake, king snake will turn and laugh at him because the king snake is actually immune to those types of venoms. So. I'm pretty sure that's why he lives up to his name, the King Snake.